Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. myself are here in the office. Mark Bills is also here. He's about to join us. And then online and on the phone are Joseph Dutton, Shelby Brimmer, and Bruce Mello. We also have Fact TV streaming this on YouTube and somewhere else. Um, okay, first, next up is review changes to the agenda, if any. I do not have any changes to the agenda. Gwen, do you have any changes to the agenda? No. Uh, Bruce, do you have any changes to the agenda? I just want to talk briefly about the voting of the school of us, uh, of us doing the county next week. Okay, why don't we talk about that during Guy's segment? Yeah, okay. Is that cool? All right. Uh, Joseph, do you have any changes to the agenda? No. Shelby, any changes to the agenda? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, scheduled members of the public, uh, there are none. Um, unscheduled members of the public, there is no one here in person, nor is there anyone online, uh, which moves us right along to 5A, approving the minutes from the May 20th meeting. Um, the few things I have, correction-wise, Joseph, for some reason, wasn't included. Yep. Um, we'll include him, because he was there. And then uh, Gwen noticed on, under the SLP update, there's a little stray comma in the first paragraph. Uh, and then on the second page, there are a few instances of a few words missing the last character. Some just little yeah. typographical things. Um, we'll get all of those fixed. I have a marked up copy with Peter is not online with us, but he's going to view the recording and do the minutes. He has a conflict with a school meeting at the same time. Um, other than the minor typographical things and adding Joseph that I noted, Bruce, did you see any other changes? Uh, you only thing that's like you, the typographical, um, uh, COVID impact 19, Next to Brigger, Will was W I L, she was in W I L L. Yes, yeah. yeah. I got that one. And then uh, under town clerk report, business as usual, there was one S. Yep, I got that one. I saw. Okay. Um, Joseph, any other changes to the to the minutes for you? No. Shelby, any other changes to the minutes for you? I uh, no. Okay. Then I make a motion that we approve the minutes from the May 20th meeting as amended. Is there a second? I second. Seconded by Bruce. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from May 20th as amended signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the minutes are approved, and I will get those changes to Peter so that he can make them. Or maybe I'll just make them in his PDF. Um, next up is old business, and uh, the first item up is tax collection update. Uh, Mr. Tanza, I think we were hoping to just check in and sort of see where things might stand after a couple of weeks. Um, F, as, of, uh, as of today... Uh, we started out with a little over $40,000 in arrears. 
in, um, in a, uh, delinquent taxes, and we're down to about 26000 right now. So we've collected 14000 and there's a few other checks that are coming in tomorrow. So we're in the right direction. And when you think that we had over $300,000 of taxes that we had to raise and have a deficit of uh, approximately $25,000, uh, the town is in good shape. But uh, we'll keep trying to get the other people to respond. We gave them until June 15th before we would access any uh, penalty. So hopefully we'll few, a few more checks will come in. So Great. That sounds, that sounds very positive. Um, yeah. Um, any, Gwen, did you have any other, any follow-up questions on no. that? Bruce, any follow-up questions for Guy on the collection? No, no, sounds great. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. Let me ask you another question. Uh, Guy, um, in a normal, normal stream of things, in a normal year, where does this sit as far as delinquent taxes at this time? Uh, right now, we're probably on par with what we normally are at this time okay. of the year. We, we're between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars in delinquencies going into the second week of June, and usually by the end of August, the two-month period after the close of the year, we pretty much have most of those taxes. What we have in the last four years have most of those taken care of, but this year okay. will be a challenge. Okay. Um, any other questions, Bruce, or was that it? No, that's it. Okay. Joseph, uh, any questions for Guy as far as the tax collection goes? No. Okay. Shelby, how about you? Any further questions for you? No, not that. All right. Excellent. Flying right along, and then we come to SLP <laughs> updates. Um, all right. Okay. Bruce. In the past, where we have put wood chips around the swing sets, the swing sets and the stuff down in the opposite direction from her That's enclosed area, yeah. we've never done anything yeah, within not. her enclosed. Those are all her. We do it on the things that we own, which are the installed larger oh, stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I guess we should have had a, I mean, I, I thought everybody was on the same page about what we actually put wood chips around. I mean, the, the playground equipment that we always talk about and have always talked about below. is I, the I, stuff I, down I, below that is right. actually our responsibility. At that time, you know, I'm sorry. I, oh, no, that's okay. That no, that's okay. I just really jumped on the, the non-responsibility trip in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, there uh, was a... I mean... Given what I already said, now I'm kind of in a bind. Well, sorry, guys. There was a, it looked like a yard of sand was delivered on the uh, blacktop, and I think they may be using that in the enclosed part of their uh, facility, you know. The same part. So I don't know. Right. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even sure what they have within that enclosed area that would require wood chips under it. Um, they, have, they have swing sets, and, 
and I think they have a dome, you know, like a geodesic dome and other playground equipment that the, the kids go in and play around with. And they, I yeah. think they, they, they have a lot of the worships in there to soften it to comply with state standards, I would imagine. Well, that's their responsibility. Well, I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with them using some of the wood chips for that, but we're not going to distribute those. I mean, what, what we have to do for our insurance purposes is make sure that the equipment that we are responsible for is safe. So, so we, have to do, we have to do something, either dragging and freshening up or putting more wood chips down on the stuff that we have. I think it's a minimum of six inches. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, let's, uh, yeah, I don't know. We, we have to have us go back and have a separate conversation with them then. Yeah. I mean, unless, yeah. I, I mean, don't they use, don't their kids use the big equipment as well? And the, our equipment, I'm going to call it, the larger equipment in the lower field. Yeah, they use, um, so don't don't they have concerns about that sort of thing? You're going down the hill, but there's a couple of things there. That yeah, there's a swing set. There's a tether ball thing. There's jungle gym. The jungle gym or, or yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that, I guess I would suggest we go back and and I'm we can arrange. I'm fine to come out there and meet with you and them, and we can talk okay. about. It. Yeah, we'll do that. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I'm excited about it. <laughs> well, no, it's fine. I just, yeah, I mean, it's for lots of reasons we're not going to get into um, taking care of taking care of their of what they own. Yeah, it's not right. I'm right with you. It's really easy, especially when you have. I have to say this politically correct. Um, people that are not familiar with maintenance, I'll put it that way, to tag on anybody that they'll get to do the work. But what you said, what you're implying, what you kind of stated, is so that we have a limited responsibility to, to that place. Their use is their use. It's kind of like you renting a house and calling over your landlord to do your backyard. It's the same thing. I get where you're coming with it. So I'm, I, I apologize for sticking my neck out. I didn't realize I was doing it. No, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, really what it really what it boils down to is they own that playground that's enclosed and all of it. And so they have the responsibility for whatever there is. We own the playground equipment that's in the lower part, and that's why we have a responsibility for it. It predates them being there. I mean, maybe it's a little confusing because they, of course, took over for Tina, who had built that whole other part, so they might also be somewhat confused, I guess, but yeah, why don't we, why don't we arrange to have another conversation with them and we'll figure yeah, something out. Okay, <laughs> Joseph, yeah, sorry, yeah, Joseph, how do I, yeah, I want to give everybody else a chance to, yeah. Joseph, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I misheard you, David, but, uh, Gina didn't install any of that, uh, lower playground equipment. No, I, I'm, in years. yeah, sorry, I'm talking about the upper playground, the enclosed, the one that's enclosed. Between the school and the church. Between the school and the church. Yeah, yeah, and then the other, the lower stuff has been there for years. years. Yeah, exactly, and that, and that was my point. That, that stuff we as a town own. Mm -hmm and are responsible for, as opposed to the playground that's between the school and the church, which yeah. is owned and responsible of the renter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I might have, I might have been confused, confusing when I was saying it, but I think we're on the same page. Yeah, uh, I, I was also curious, I couldn't remember if we paid for the wood chips. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we were intending to because it's our responsibility. We thought they were going right somewhere else. Well, how much? I don't recall how much we did pay for them. How much what? How much did we pay for the witches? I don't remember. It was a couple of years ago, anyway. I have to 
pest dog or somebody if I was on part of it. Oh, they're, they're old wood chips that have been sitting there for a couple no, of years? No, these are new wood chips. No, 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 no. no, no. I, I, I think about what was done previously. I think the question is how much are we paying Tom Bloom for the wood chips that he's just delivered, though? 200 bucks. Two loads, 100 bucks each. For, for how much wood chips? Two truck loads. For two loads. How many yards? Probably 12 yards. I think Tom's truck is like six or seven yards, maybe. It's situated. We never have to do it again for many years. Yeah. That was my intent. They fluff it up. I agree. Yeah. 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 I would just, uh, my feeling is that that's a lot of money for wood chips because um, you, can, you can get them for free, kind of. Um, and I apologize if I didn't speak about this earlier. But uh, that's that's an awful lot of money for wood chips, and if it's going as we've discussed for uh, their uh, playground equipment, maybe there's a way that they um, just use the wood chips, and um, we just make some of that money back with like one of the other little bills that we don't we like pay them back for part of the phone bill or something. I'm glad you wrote that because I meant to recall uh, to respond to Sarah's email today to ask her if she's been taking that uh, 50 bucks out a month for, okay. for that bill. Um, yeah, I think you're really kind of splitting hairs at this point, Joe, Joseph, because um, we've already, I've already committed us to doing it. So we're going to have to, like, uh, we're now, we're, now we're changing everything. You want to change everything around. I'll say though, Bruce, that it, I mean, it's I, I agree with Joseph in that. I mean, if let's go have a conversation with them because they should have understood okay. this. Even, quite frankly, even if you didn't, they. My feeling is they should have understood what their responsibilities are for the equipment that they own. Um, so we can we can work something out. I would be taken advantage of either. And I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll explain this. Yeah. That Olivia's been there for years. So it's not as if she left with Tina. She was running the show. So she's aware of all this. So um, I'm getting this thing where I'm starting to get the feeling that I'm starting to be used a little bit. I'll give you one. That's one example. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't Maybe think I'm just. Bruce, I think that's the conversation with them about it um, not to over dramatize but I will be the bad guy in this situation I am more than happy to do that so, yeah. sorry Gwen Gwen has a point that she wants to make hang on Joseph as far as the wood chips are concerned there is a specific uh, you can't just use any kind of wood chips under a swing set for kids to play in. In other words, it can't be pine because that's pitchy. It's got to be a certain kind of wood chip because they're kids, was my understanding. And we've got wood chips from Thomas before. Is that not correct? Yeah, I think I think he chipped logs and without the leaves, without the pine needles, yeah. which uh, makes a little difference there. But I was under so, the understanding it couldn't just be any kind of wood chips because some tree had ants and bugs and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so I yeah. thought it had to be a specific. Yeah. There are species like hemlock doesn't generally have bugs in the bark. Right. The so I thought that was the reason we went with Thomas is because he knew what kind of chips we needed. Yeah. I've and we bought them from him for years. Yeah. I know that he, uh, he delivered, which... It probably is a delivery fee. I was thinking, after hearing this conversation, maybe we could split it with uh, the daycare. Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we'll work something out. That's I, that's 
fair and, you know, given the circumstances, the best situation we can. But let's let's have a conversation with them and we'll get okay. that. Okay. Um, Shelby, did you have any uh, other thoughts on that since everybody else has weighed in? No, I think you guys certainly covered it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what else, what else on the building, Bruce? Nothing. Anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Don't touch it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, uh, moving on to 6C COVID-19 survey. Um, Shelby, I think you were going to take a pass at yeah. coming up and with something. Yeah, I did not realize until I sat down to do this that I hadn't shared it. Um, so I did just share it to you guys, but obviously you might not have your computers in front of you. Um, so I can just kind of read through. I just kind of came up with four questions and left them pretty open-ended. Um, I don't think that if we send this out, we're going to get an overwhelming response. So I don't think that reading people's answers or like going through the information and gathering it is going to be that difficult. Like I consider doing something more multiple choice, but I think that I didn't really, I didn't think that would really give us a lot, you know, valuable information. It was just like, Oh, did this affect you financially or this? Like if we kind of know, um, so I left it more free form. Can anyone see it right now? Yeah. Uh, give me a second and I'll, I'll open it. Can I, can I do it? And, can I uh, just for a second? Yes. New book has already sent one out. I don't know if you guys got the card in the mail. Oh, that was thorough. Do you need any help? Uh, do you need to uh, take your dog to the cats with that? Uh, there's a bunch of dogs. Uh, did they, did everybody get these cards? I got one in the mail last week. And I oh, said, yeah, I saw that. that, that wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't thinking. You'll, we'll, we'll read through what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking anything like that specifically. Okay. Uh, okay. Hang on one sec, I'm just going to share this for anybody that is on the online. Um, yeah, the new book one seemed like they actually had, like, they had the staffing to kind of, like, be proactively coordinating things and monitoring them. And I think for now, I'm just kind of interested to see what the community might be needing and how they're, how they're affected. And then we can determine if there's anything in our capacity that we can provide, whether it's facilitating something or, or but I don't, I, I think I would probably go as far as kind of just being, you know, asking if somebody needs something, you know, offering a tangible, um, at, at the moment, just because A, you don't really know what people need, and I don't think that us as a board really can, could meet that need if somebody was like, oh yeah, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I think that we need to figure, we could figure out from this survey potentially if there's something we could do, but. Okay, Shelby, do you want to, I mean, I'm sharing it for people who are on, but of course Bruce is not online in this. So do you want to just read through the four questions? Yeah, sure. Um, so the first one's just how has COVID-19 most impacted you and or the members of your household? Um, the second one, what are the biggest concerns for you and, your, and or your household moving forward? on um, what services and supports, I gave examples of state, community organizations, nonprofit or informal, have you accessed during this time? And is there anything that could be facilitated by the town that you feel that would be beneficial to you and or members of your household as our community continues to cope with COVID-19? Okay, that's good to me. That's simple. Um, Shelby, can I ask, how do you envision this being sent out to people? Like, how, how would... Um, I was just thinking start with the listserv and see if we get any information back. Um, I don't, I'm not sure. If we, if we do the listserv, which has, how many people are on the listserv again, Julie? 120-ish. Yeah. So, um, if we don't get, I mean, if 120 of the population, if it gets out to around 120, which is a pretty decent chunk, and, and we are not getting any responses. I'd say that it probably wouldn't be worth doing a mailing necessarily. Um, yeah. If we start seeing some interest in it, then maybe we could consider, you know, getting it out to people who don't have email no, or the listserv. Um, but I, I guess I had like so I was just thinking about it as sending it out on there. But I guess anyone else had another idea. 
front porch forum, you can send it out there. I put it on the front porch forum, and then anyone who sees that could yeah. respond. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I guess. And it's the specified where apply this. Yeah. Right. Can you apply it? Uh, and, and, and the town stuff, right? And see how you respond to it. So would you would would this ask for people's name or address or information, or would it be completely? Confidential. How would that? How do well, you envision them, that work? For them to respond. Well, I guess I they'd have to have an email. Yeah, address, if they're, so. they're going to respond by email, obviously, yeah, it would, they would I'd at least see their email. Um, I mean, if somebody wanted to, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that anybody. I don't feel like any of these things would make anyone feel like they couldn't. None of this feels contentious enough that anyone would feel like they couldn't share their name, yeah, I hope. Right. Um, but, but if it did, I mean, if you guys feel that was important, we could provide an option to drop off answers or something, it just at the, you know, at the town office. But I don't think that that would, I don't see someone going through that effort. <laughs> I feel like most people would just respond. If they have an interest in responding, they would probably be willing to share. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, um, do you think we should verify address or just have them also give their address so we can confirm that they're actually community members? No. I think right now, aren't you just trying to get a um, kind of a feeling for it? I don't think we really need to know people's names. You may have no response at all. Well, I mean, at least, or at least names, I guess, so we know, so that like when we review it, if a name doesn't seem familiar, we... We know if it's not it's not somebody from I don't know Williamsville who responded to it if we posted on front porch forum. Right. I don't think I don't I think those people that are going to respond will put their name down anyway because they yeah. they're responding. Yeah, that, that's that's a fair point. Um, okay, why well, not? Yeah, if I, if we did if we yeah. agreed to do this and I posted a front porch forum, I would obviously specify. For Brookline. Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't we just go around it? Just give everybody. Uh, Gwen, how do you feel about um, the idea of sending this out to people through email and maybe front porch forum? Well, I think right now email and the front porch forum is the way to go because we have 400 people at 50 cents. I mean, we're trying to save money, and that's a lot of postage yeah. to not yeah. even probably get a response. Yeah. So I think, like Shelby said, it, it's a good way to see if we get anything. Hmm. We might also yeah. be... Facebook? Yeah. Hang on a sec, first. Sorry, we might also, me. if we get permission from the treasurer, we might be also to set that in as an insert in the tax bill for 2021. If it's just a little, a little postcard kind of thing. I don't like to set us, you know, a precedent of asking for information in tax bills, but if it's if it's worthwhile, if it's something the select board thinks might be advantageous, uh, that's just another avenue of thought. Um, well, let's let's any further thoughts, Gwen? We'll keep okay. going around. Right. Okay, um, Bruce, what's your feeling about this? Whether we send it out and do we just do it email? Uh, I think it's what Shelby said, and I also think if, it, like Shelby said, if if it appears as if we're getting good response, we can consider this step forward. But I think I, I like the idea that Guy came up with, or Glenn came up with, or the instant idea. If we can do that, if we can save some money by doing it, you know, when are the tax bills are going to go out at the end of July? Uh, they're scheduled to go out 30 days before the first payment. The first payment due August fifteenth, right now. Uh, but that. Early part of July. Okay. Yeah, but those dates are starting to be Okay, that works. Somebody, somebody's got a lot of background noise. If you can mute, if you have somebody on in the background. I left my, God, left my, um, my nails and stuff along. Okay. Um, <laughs> so there's a radio or something. Okay, um, Joseph, uh, what's your thinking about this at the moment? I think that it's uh, pretty good questions, and um, it's definitely worth posting to the listserv and to the front porch. I don't really think that it's that we should be spending money because we're not really putting this out there 
looking to provide some sort of service or relief of any sort. We're just trying to get a feel for uh, what's going on in the town. So I, I don't think that um, there would really be any, there's not re necessarily yeah, any benefit uh, mm -hmm. associated with spending money to uh, distribute this that I see. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll echo that. I, I agree completely that, yeah, I mean, I think, I think these questions are a good opportunity to get a feel for things and to Shelby's point and your point and others. The listserv provides enough people to get a feel. Um, and then, you know, if there's some follow-up that down the road we decide we might want to do, there are other options. But for now, it seems sensible to me to just, to just do it as an email. I'm not even sure it makes sense to post it on Front Porch Forum, but I suppose there's not necessarily any harm in doing that. Um, uh, okay, so Shelby, um, are you any any further information you need from any of us to make that happen? No, just if there's any, if there's. I mean, if there was a, if there's something that you feel like I could be, something we could be asking differently or more or less, I mean, I'm open to feedback. I just threw these together. So I'm not like, I'm not going to be upset if somebody wants to tweet something. I'm not, not emotionally attached to it the way it is. Um, but, um, but if, but if no one has an issue, then I, I would feel comfortable if you guys are good at submitting it to Julie and starting with the listserv and seeing where we go from there. Um, I'll just go around one more quick time. I mean, I don't, I mean, it's a little hard. I'm just sort of reading it for the first time. I haven't given it a whole lot of thought, but at the same time, I'm not sure that for myself, I, I'm not really sure what else we necessarily should or would want to ask. So it, it seems like a good starting place for me. Gwen, do you have I, any I, tweaks or anything? It's a good starting point. Okay. Uh, Joseph, anything about this that you think should be changed or that you might want to add to at this point? No. Okay. Bruce, how about you? I'm good. I, like, like I said, I, I agree with what Shelby's trying to do. I think of all of her, all of her ideas on supportive. Okay. All right. Can I get that in writing? Yeah. You know, you don't need it in writing. You heard it from the word. Um, okay, great. Um, that sounds good. So thank you, Shelby, for taking that and running with it. And we'll. Um, and I guess the question would be: Are you going to have people send responses to your email address? I think it makes sense. Otherwise, it has to get filtered back through Julie every single time someone might have a response. Um, yeah. Sorry. Well, yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be an option, but yeah, I guess yeah. I just meant whether. Um, I could, I could about that. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I would just have it come back to you to your email. And then, uh, yeah, it was either that or I was going to try and see if I could do like a Google form and put the link to the Google to the questionnaire in there. But I also wasn't sure if that would throw people off who maybe aren't super technological. Yeah, I, I think you I think you're right that maybe just making it as simple yeah. as so Replying people who can deal email. with an email can deal with it. It's yeah. not like there are so okay. many yeah. questions that you need. Okay, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I would do that. I think you're right. Just make it keep it simple for people to be as encouraging for people to respond as possible. Um, okay, any last comments on that before we move on? Cool. All right. Thanks, Shelby. Um, all right. Moving on to 6D Green Up Day recap. Um, green Up Day is coming on. It was Marcus here, and he can attest as well. It was the most mellow Green Up Day we've had in a very, very long time. Tom Brooks says it's the when he was going around doing a bunch the of cleanest. stuff. It's the cleanest he's seen the town since he's lived here. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, there were, there's, I mean, we, we're all kind of speculating it's because less people are out driving around in their cars, throwing stuff out their windows. People were quarantined, you know, early on. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, we, you know, we. The town clerk expanded his, uh, his uh, responsibilities. Yeah, I mean, we ended up there were there were definitely things that we would do and have done in years past that we didn't necessarily do. We didn't go after some of the big trash dump areas on Ellen Ware or on Putney Mountain. Although I'll say I walked all of Putney Mountain on Sunday and there were really not very many big trash dumping areas. Um, there's less there. We covered almost all the roads that we normally would cover and we had probably half of the bags, I'm going to guess, and considerably less tires than we normally have. Um, so that's all very positive. I suppose we may go back to reality eventually, but um, thankfully it was, it was pretty straightforward. Um, so a big thank you to Mark and Tom and Tom's whole family, as well as lots of other people um, who gathered stuff all over and dealt with the challenges of, you know, having to wear gloves more religiously and everything else. Um, it was it was a good it was a good event. I'm going to send out a thank you email to people through the list serve. And one of the things I'll be saying in the email is this is my last green update. So I'm going to be searching for someone to take it over because I'm not going to do it. I thought you didn't do it. What's that? I thought you didn't do it this time. No, he did do it. No, I did. <laughs> okay. But this is the last time. Um, that's okay. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, moving on to seven new business. We have no new business. So we'll jut right to summary update reports. Mr. Tanza, um, I think among other things, we want to have a little chat about the school stuff, but what else, what else is going on for you? Okay, uh, well, we've had uh, absentee ballot requests. We've had 17 so far, and it's costing the town $1.40 for every absentee ballot that we send. Uh, that's the postage, it's 70 cents for us to send it and 70 cents for the respondent to send it back to us. But at any rate, the school budget vote is the 10th of June, and right now it's been batted around a few different ways, but it appears that we're going to do the co-mingling as we did before, but maybe the day after. So basically what we're going to do at this point is we're going to count the ballots to make sure that the same amount of ballots we have match the same amount of people that are checked off on the entrance list, and that's all we have to do. So I don't think it would take more than a half hour. So if we had four to six people, that would be helpful. And we could get out of here by 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. I mean, I'm sorry, 8 o'clock at night. I'm going to put the ballots in the vault. And they're going to be brought over to Anita Bean at uh, Townsend on uh, the following day. That's the plan right now. Okay. And so just to recap, the plan is for that night to count the ballots starting at 7 o'clock. Gwen will be here, I will be here, Shelby will be here, and Bruce will be here. So the four of us will count while Guy supervises. Is everybody still okay with that? Bruce, you had something you wanted to discuss, though, about the battle. Yeah, I'm having a little problem with the close proximity thing. Um, and I don't want to be an SOB about it. That's so I'm trying to figure a way. How many ballots are there usually, Guy? Roughly? 60 or uh, 70. Uh, around between 60 and 80. But the bottom line is uh, we have masks, we have sanitizer. The people who come in here will have to be wearing a mask. The people who, before they even grab a ballot, will have to sanitize their hands. We have all those in, in motion right now. The bottom line is there's enough room in the office that you can take 25 ballots and go in one corner, some could take 25 and go the other. It shouldn't take more than a half hour, but, you know... Okay. Okay. But Bruce, if you're not... Okay. Okay. Not Sorry, but Bruce, if you're not comfortable with it, and that's totally understandable, then you shouldn't come and do it. No. Okay? We can... We can... We can completely work without you. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I know, but if you're not comfortable, don't be comfortable. You have to be... Yeah. You're off the hook. Yeah, don't worry about it then. We, nobody, none of us, none of us want somebody to do something that they're uncomfortable right. doing or that they think I, I might be better. If you're going to 
put it outside. What? If you had a little table outside, you put 25 or 50 out there. Yeah, I mean, honestly. I have, I have N95 masks. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I understand. I just mean by the time we do that, one of us can just count those 25 okay. after we're done. It, it, that, so that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's, that's okay. not a problem. What is, what is putting them outside? Um, right, so, Guy, yes. what else is, um, did you have other uh, things? Basically, no, that's it. Uh, the the uh, dog, the delinquent dogs now have been, uh, I've sent a copy to everybody. There's 11, peop 11 delinquent dogs who have not signed up for their license. Uh, one, o one owner seems to own a number of them. There was also a response from Dottie in regards to that owner. So, but at this point, it's after May 31st. We've been extremely lenient. We have not filed any late charges for anybody, for any dog this year. And believe me, they came in way after April 1st. But the bottom line is now the $50 fine will kick in as of June 1st. So you have the list as required by law. Dot has the list as the animal control officer. Um, it's in your hands now. And if you happen to see somebody on there you know, you can let them know that if they don't have the dog anymore, they need to call the office. So we can take them off the list. Otherwise, they're fine. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. It's been busy, you know, we're doing the things. Gwen is doing the, uh, the books, the uh, land record books. And uh, we get a lot of telephone slow. requests, a lot of telephone questions, and it keeps us busy. Cool. All right. Thanks, Guy. Yep. Um, moving on to highways and roads, Mr. Bills, how are you? I'm doing well. You want to maybe wheel yourself a little bit closer? It's a little hard for these guys to hear something. So. Okay. Uh, since I've last seen everybody, um, we've made it through mud season, took down the road posted signs. Uh, it was an extended mud season, so we ended up doing a little bit more this year than prior years, uh, putting down crushed gravel to make the roads passable, keeping them scraped off. And uh, so, as time goes on here, the roads are drying up well and we've been applying new fresh gravel to the road surfaces, uh, helping to create a, a crown to the middle of the road, um, which is state standard, and uh, just bringing the roads up to a, a better maintainable surface. Uh, on my next, I've gone through all the roads, uh, you know, it took them a little bit longer to come around, but uh, my next scraping with the, with the roads uh, will be raked smoother. And then we're going to ask if the town of Newfane will uh, come over and put, apply chloride to the roads so that they'll stay moist and compacted to hopefully lessen the scraping for the summer months. Um, yeah, you know, we've kind of been uh, holding back a little bit, not knowing where we're going with the, the virus on certain projects. Um, at some point, I guess we're going to talk about our, our paving on Hill Road, whether to uh, wait another season or, or follow through with our prior plan. Um, so... That's still up in the air. We have some grants that are still uh, on hold. Um, I've been, we ordered, through the budget, we have a certain amount of uh, money set aside for maintenance. And uh, this year I ordered some parts through John Deere. And I've started uh, putting those parts on the grader. Just things that have worn that... Um, are being uh, tightened back up in the steering. Um, let me see. We also have had some extreme winds come through all our towns here, and we've had uh, numerous trees. We've been, I feel fortunate that 
we haven't had more power outages and more tree damage due to the high winds we've had. So I, I have come out uh, and removed trees from our roads. Um, we also are missing a couple of road signs. Uh, I think somebody's um, taking our road signs again. Uh, we're missing Allen Ware Road sign and, oh, and Mountain Road uh, sign. And um, so I'm placing an order to get those back in place. Um, I did have a, an old Mountain Road sign that I'm temporarily using until we get the new one. And our end stop signs, I've uh, temporarily put up stop signs uh, for the ones that were stolen. And basically that's where I'm at now. We do have some projects that I was wondering where we were at with the budget for this fiscal year. I, I know probably if, if we followed through with uh, I have some tree removal uh, that I would like to do throughout town. Um, we have some dead elm trees uh, coming up Hill Road from the river, which are slowly dwindling down. Uh, and there's certain areas, uh, trees of the same status, dead standing. Um, and I know that up until now, a lot of these crews and companies that will probably bid on this uh, haven't been able to work to do that and so I'm not sure if we'll probably end up waiting for our new fiscal year and fit it into the contractor step part of the budget. Um, we do have one project that uh, I've talked to the power company about removing some trees which I was in hopes they would do the removal because they're near power lines but after talking with uh, their representative he assured me that those trees were just outside of their reach so it'll be something we have to deal with on our own. I have about 25 trees uh, that I would like to remove to dig back the roadside and then it's all ledge. This is on Hill Road and um, it will make for a safer corner for vision um, and also the ledge will have to be uh, chiseled with a, with a hydraulic hammer to create a ditch. The water now for years has uh, seeped onto the road in the winter and, and created ice and so at some point I would like to uh, talk to the select board about um, being able to put this small job out for bid for road improvements. And so, um, for now, uh, I'm just doing general maintenance and, and keeping the, the roads, uh, you know, as good as we can until uh, things move ahead. Um, what if, um I'm going to make a make sort of a loose suggestion. What if we put an agenda item for the next meeting to just talk about road projects, and maybe okay. you know I'll invite Archie to join us as well, and maybe you guys could put your heads together in advance of that on okay, what are the things that are hanging out there in ideally in an order of priority. Okay. And then maybe we can all have a conversation about them and just see what we think we might be able to move on, what we can't, et cetera, et cetera. Go and ahead. follow up with that, um, I noticed there was a, um, quite a bit of gravel delivered. Yeah. Is he required to give us tickets to say how much was in a load? Yeah. Do you he, have those tickets? Are they I, submitted I when they're put with yes. the bill? When they're put with the bill, uh, we've started a program where he keeps track of which road and how much gravel goes to each okay. road. Something that's because I noticed it was. I went so I was just yeah. wondering how much, how many loads yeah. were 
Yeah, I think so maybe I that could be on the bill. Too. If if, uh, if we get the bill out, I'm sure that okay. all the information should be specified. Because I remember at one point we discussed when anything was delivered, there was supposed to be a slip right. that went with it. Yeah, okay. I, I'm sure if the slips aren't there, the tally is there, and it tells how many yards okay. and which road, so okay, that we great. can keep Thank track you. for you know if, if there's a flood and FEMA wants to know what we're Putting on each yeah. road, that was yeah, a great. general idea. Thank you. But yes. Um, uh, I guess I'll just throw it out there generally. Everybody in agreement that that's a sensible thing to do to have a specific discussion about road projects at the next meeting? Yes. yes. All right. Uh, and does that sound okay to you, Mark? Yeah. Does that yeah, sound like a good idea? That way we can. We can start to figure out what we can maybe start to do and yes. what we can't and whatever. Sure. Um, any, I'll go around, Gwen, any questions for Mark at the no, moment? No, that you have to ask. Uh, Bruce, any questions for Mark at the moment? No, all set. Okay. I have one. Joseph. Hello, Mark. Hello, how are you doing? Joseph, any questions for Mark at the moment? No. Shelby, any questions? Nope. Guy, you have a question? I just, uh, I, was, I noticed a lot of gravel went up on Whitney Hill, and during the course of the winter, we had a lot of complaints up there. Okay. Have you really improved the road now? You think it's going to be a lot better? Well, I do. Uh, okay. We, we added a lot of crushed stone through the whole winter. We started out in late January, I believe, yep. the first mud season. Because um, that road is a problem road to begin with. Right. And, and each time we went, we put more crushed stone above and below and then more over the top. And once the road firmed up and we applied new gravel, the new gravel has more crushed stone in it as well as uh, hopefully better material to uh, compact. So, so we then uh, smoothed it off again. And... Um, created a, a, a good uh, crown in the road. So I feel, you know, a great part of our problem is, is uh, the weather, the temperature. There and no some heavy duty vehicles up there. Heavy duty vehicles and it's stuff that we almost yep. don't have control over, right. you know. Well, the reason I asked the question is that I know some people who may be listening are concerned about Whitney Hill Road and I want them to understand that we have been working toward making yes. a better trip for them. Yes, we, we have applied lots of new fresh material and uh, I have gotten compliments about Good. the upgrade is uh, they felt that it was working. So, Mark, not that we have to get too into this now, but at one point last or earlier in the winter, we had a conversation with Archie also about possibly picking one of the bad spots up on Whitney Hill as sort of a test case to try some of that meshing right. stuff. I mean, do you, uh, we don't have to decide this now, but is it, do you think that's still possibly worth experimenting with or do we think we don't even need that anymore? No, I, I think that um, there, it's, it's mainly certain areas that where the sun right. during the warmest yeah. part of the day beams in and the temperature comes up and it's instant mud. Um, and those would be good areas to definitely try. And uh, uh -huh. so, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a long section, and, yeah. you know, 100, 200 feet would be a good place to, to start where that, where that uh, would be. So yeah. yes, I feel that's a good, good project. Scraping the gravels to to one side or both sides, putting down um, this special cloth that, you know, firms the road up. It, it wouldn't do anything for surface mud, but depth-wise, it will right. hold the vehicle up. Yeah. So I, I feel it's a good... Uh, yeah, it seems road. like it's something we should maybe at least try in one good. of those yeah. Okay, cool. Um, thank you yep. very much. Uh, okay, moving on to 10 communications. Um, emails, a couple things. One we got, Guy, thank you for um, forwarding it because I'm not sure I got it otherwise. The latest census results 
And I don't know if people had a chance to look at the census results, but Are at the moment, that? as of the last one, it looked like we were a couple percentage points below where we were in 2010, but we're at, we have like a 46.8% response rate, which is higher than the county as a whole and higher than the vast majority of other towns in our county, but lower than the statewide. And all of that is lower than what it was in 2010. So hopefully more people as the cards start going out to people or things start getting physically left on people's houses, that number will come up a little bit more. Um, so that was one email that I just wanted to note. And then another one that um, came, that Dot sent today, which I originally thought she had sent to all of us, but Gwen just pointed out it, it only went to uh, Guy, myself, and Joseph that um, I'll just read the whole thing because it's not very long. But so it says, hi all, it, and it's, it's been sent to the Wyndham County Humane Society. Um, she says that last week she turned in a stray black hound female. She was in awful condition. I assume Matt Prue claimed her as his dog as I was sent a video of the dogs at Matt Prue's home by the Vermont State Police, and she was one of the eight dogs there. Vermont State Police troopers and Nancy Libby were at the home on 6 Papoose Lane Friday afternoon and contacted me, which is Dot. She goes on to say that Mr. Crew told me that all of his dogs will be gone by the end of the week, and he therefore was not going to register them here in town. Two Vermont State Police units will be going to his residence at 11 a.m. on Saturday to inspect oh, it. Right. If the dogs are there, um, this is she's writing to the Humane Society. If the dogs are there, we would like to impound them for municipal violations, including but not limited to living conditions, physical conditions, and lack of registration. Since Brookline contracts with you, I would like to get your advice support and possibly have someone from Wyndham County Humane Society also meet the Vermont State Police and myself on Saturday when we do the inspection. We may need cages. Um, so Dot has reached out to Wyndham Humane. I mean, I think for lots of reasons, most notably the care of the dogs, hopefully genuinely the dogs no longer belong to this guy by the end of this week. Hopefully, jeez. Um, so that's this email that we got from Dot today. So we'll obviously know more once the end of the week has come and gone, um, and I'm sure she'll update us. But that's that's the latest on the Does Matt she need Prue to dog. With her? Well, I mean, she has state police going. She has. I mean, she, I mean, she has not. Not ask ask anyone else of us to go with her that I'm aware of. All right. Um, okay, so that's that's it for emails of that note. More encouraging than it's, the other things. Yeah, it's. I mean, so it, it's in a bad sad, situation, but... it's maybe at least moving in a, a better somewhat direction. better way. Hopefully, well, that's good. Um, there's no regular mail at all. Um, and then moving on, which moves us on to 11 to pay orders. Um, hey, David. Yes, uh, Joseph. I probably should have brought this up at um, changes to the agenda, but since we were just uh, speaking about this whole dog situation, I um, would like to bring up something that I, I suppose could be uh, uh, labeled as the, the driving situation in town. Um, okay. Well, thanks, thanks for the comment, Bruce. Uh, I think that uh, I think that my long drawn out uh, uh, rants about the driving are uh, of, of a pretty great consequence to a lot of the people in town. And, and I've spoken to a couple dozen residents that, uh, as of what I'm sure many of you have, have seen happen last week, uh, a lot of people are 
really having a hard time dealing with uh, their neighbors there, the Perus. And um, I, I would assume, did everyone see what happened? I'm not sure if you guys drive down yeah, that yeah. grassy road. Yeah. Must the tire have, marks. It must have been a whole set of tires. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, how did they oh. have any tread left? They can't. So, they, um, so, yeah, so sorry. So, what's the follow up to that? Well, I mean, a lot of people are just uh, curious what we can, what we can do to deal with uh, uh, residents like this because they did all of that, those burnouts at um, between like one and one forty-five in the morning, um, and that woke up, uh, you know, a half dozen uh, of their neighbors. Uh, half half of them are are older people uh, that are that are scared. I've uh, spoken with many of them personally, one of them's uh, someone that's close to me, and they're terrified to call the police because they, they fear uh, retribution from their neighbor. Um, they also uh, shoot their, their guns at, I've heard several uh, occasions that they were shooting firearms at uh, like 11.30 at night. Um, the dogs doesn't need any more uh, talking on that point. We know about it. But um, what I've been hearing from from people is they're they're really scared. Uh, some of them are angry that we aren't doing more, and uh, I, I think that uh, we are doing everything that's within our power. Um, yeah. A lot of people have brought up uh, again and again. We should contract with a law enforcement agency. Should we get a constable? Should we have a noise ordinance? Um, just all sorts of stuff. And uh, I just wanted to, to bring it up as a topic because um, I've never I've never seen this uh, much of a, what I guess I would call a, a, a crisis in the town that's that's affecting so many people and, and they're really scared and upset and having a hard time living their lives. Mm -hmm. Joseph? Barriac? Yep. Okay. Let's start with the noise ordinance. So here's a here's the thing I'm gonna mention guys. This is not on the agenda at all. So uh, we, should we, it. we we need to be fairly limited in the, the extent to which we discuss this. Um, okay. I apologize. I, I really should have brought this up uh, on the agenda. Um, well, yeah, and it's whatever. There's there's some latitude, and we can we can have some conversations about it. But it just we need to be. Um, if I may, I I have a agenda point. Hang on, sir. The Vermont uh, State. Hang, on, Bruce. Hang on, Bruce. 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 Let guy have let guy weigh in for one quick second here. Okay, please. Lately, there's been a lot of state police uh, presence in the town. They are totally aware of the situation on Turtle Drive, where you have an animal control officer who's also been very proactive in regards to the individual on Turtle Drive. The town is, I could understand the town being upset. I had one of the residents come to our office who was just totally, I thought she was going to have a heart attack. She was so upset and everything else, and I explained to her that we're doing the best we can. One individual doesn't dictate changing the flavor of the town, but the bottom line is that or the bottom line is that we are the town is very proactive. They don't see it because they're not around, but the state police have been here. They've been notified, and they're doing everything in their power to minimize this and to eliminate it. So it's going to have to play out, unfortunately. The other thing is that people must make complaints. If you don't complain, you can't get any action. The complaints must go to the state police or the sheriff's department because the town doesn't have that responsibility. So I, you know, I understand. We have one or two individuals in a town of 500 people that are making it hell for us. I wish they would change their address and go away, but right now, they're still here. We do have some other recourse that we may be able to do. We can speak to the landlord. There's other things we can do. But when people approach you and say, what is the town doing? What, you know, we need an ordinance and so forth. Let them know that the town is doing everything in its power. Thank you. 
any correlations because it's the it's the end of the meeting. Yeah. But yeah. Um, there's a, I concur with everything that Guy had to say, and there's more explanation involved in it. But basically, what Guy has said, other than not a strong enough emphasis on people aren't complaining. They're not filing complaints. They're afraid to make a complaint. If they're afraid to make a complaint, what do they expect the select board to do? Well, but that's first. The police. First, yeah, but but well, but to some extent, we are. I mean, we are we're responsible well, for the sake of being we, people. We have the well. I mean, we have the responsibility as the constable of the town, which some people okay. interpret that as though we are law enforcement. I mean, we know we are not a body of law enforcement, and what we can do and what anyone can do is refer things to actual law enforcement like the state police, but they have processes and they require complaints complaints from people in many instances, which is unfortunate, but yeah. does complicate the matter. But I mean, I, I have sympathy for people who are afraid of the person and therefore don't want to don't want to go on record. That's, you know, that that's not the their gentleman. fault that they've unfortunately ended up in this situation. Um, I mean, I guess I would suggest for transparency's sake, we could, we could put something on the agenda for next time to discuss ideas of what can be done uh, when a situation like this occurs. Or craft a letter to the state police. I'm not, I mean, I'll say that I, you know, I've contacted the state police and spoke to the head of the Westminster Barracks a few months ago about this individual. Um, and at the time, what I was told was that they basically had no real reports of anything. And essentially, if people had problems, they needed to contact the state police. Um, so, you know, there, it's... It's a challenge, but I mean, Joseph, I guess I'll go again, we'll put it, we can put it on the agenda to discuss, but um, what, like, what do you think we should do? What's, I, do you I have an idea? I'd like to something? state that uh, myself bringing this up, uh, I hope nobody takes this as uh, me trying to push a noise ordinance or trying to say we need well, to do anything rash. I, I simply think we need to have a discussion I have uh, recently spoken with uh, uh, the the leader of the uh, Westminster VSP barracks. Um, I think things are moving forward. People do need to make complaints, but um, I, I also have spoken with uh, the residents at, at uh, whatever that um, address is there. We all know who we're talking about, um, and they... I, I think, I guess the one thing I would say I think we should do is uh, we should put it on the agenda and I, I don't, I don't want to sound, I, I don't want to run the risk of, of sounding like a, a bully here, but I almost feel like uh, we should call it as it is and, um, and almost put this on the agenda as the specific issue that it is. This isn't, we don't have we don't necessarily have a, a, a reckless driving problem in the town. We don't have a shooting at night problem in the town. We have uh, we have although, a, a one person in the problem in the town. Although I guess, can I, sorry, can we just pause for a second though? I will say that several weeks ago, we had multiple discussions about reckless driving in the town that I'm not sure involved this person at that point. At least, no one ever told me time. that that's who this was. Yeah, at, at the time, and, and, and sure, we do have more than one person who's, who's driving a little too fast and doing a burnout in the town. And at the time, I wasn't entirely aware of this. But um, I think for the last several months, a, a large portion of our reckless driving in this town has come from these residents here. Um, so, yeah, sure, there are people who make too much noise at night and, and break other laws that are disrespectful of their neighbors, but it is uh, disproportionately mm -hmm. uh, yeah, these yeah. residents of this address. And, um, and I think that we need to, if we have this discussion, we need to have it um, directly. And uh, we have, as Guy said, we got like 500 people or whatever in this town. And um, 
and uh, just a few of them living at the same place are being unbelievably disrespectful. They're hostile. They're aggressive. I mean, we we live in Brookline, Vermont, and there's and there's more than one resident that's afraid that their neighbor is going to take violent repercussions against them if they contact the state police. That is that. I mean, that's that's what I said just a few moments ago. They're afraid I know, I know. Of, of repercussions, and I I don't know how to I don't. I don't think that it's possible really to overstate the severity of that. It's, it's, not, it's not a feud between two residents. Oh, yeah. It's one person that's acting so aggressive and hostile that when they're approached, I mean, I, I would assume Doc's had similar experiences. Uh, when they're approached, they get uh, borderline violent. And, um, yeah. and uh, it's, it's absolutely uh, ridiculous. And we... We are doing everything that we can as the town, um, and I don't think we should into anything like a noise well, events, I think but I think we have to have a direct um, discussion about it, and maybe, maybe if it's possible, the town, the select board could uh, maybe, I don't know the legality of all of this, but maybe draft some sort of uh, open letter to, to these specific residents, because it, it, it's a severe problem. Well, we, can, we can discuss it, but I just want to make one point. We went to the noise ordinance for Route Route, and I'll quite tell you, I, I, I initiated it, and I wanted it, and I still want it. I think it's a great idea. We looked at other towns, on and on and on. I'm not going to go on and on and on. So, if you're looking for a way to noise ordinance, you're coming to the right place. But, I'm not um, saying that you should do that. I'm just saying that, that's one yeah. of the things that has been brought up by one or two other people. Uh, residents of the town, and so uh, I saw residents of me in the past too bad. But I'll tell you, you're asking for a riot. But uh, hey, I got narrow shoulders. Okay, and, all right. Let's so if you want to go that route. I've got all the paperwork on it from other towns right. and stuff that we we were not that we had visited Bruce, back in, uh, okay. in 2014, 2015. I still have the information. Okay. Okay, and we're not. There's there's nothing, and that's not going to be on the agenda for next time. What's going to be on the agenda for next time is just a, a discussion about Six Papoose Lane, basically, about the okay. situation at Six Papoose Lane. And, okay. you know, I, I suggest everyone take a little bit of time in the meantime and give some thought to what they think may or may not be this Saturday may, This Saturday may change some things. Too. It may. Well, yeah, it, it, it may change some things, but yeah. If, uh, if, um, All right, and that's going to be the end of that, because, again, that was something that was completely not on our agenda. Be Sorry. Would be be okay, be some be ideas be we'll talk about after. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, all right. So now we are moving on to pay orders. Um, first up is the accounts payable warrant, which I signed on the 25th, um, we'll do our usual thing and just go around. You mean payroll? Uh, payroll. Did I say accounts payroll? Sorry, I meant payroll. Um, Gwen, have you reviewed the payroll warrant? Yes. Uh, do you have any questions? No. Bruce, have you reviewed the payroll warrants? And do you have any questions? No. Okay. Yes, I did, and no, I have no questions. Excellent. Uh, Joseph, have you reviewed the payroll warrants, and do you have any questions? Um, I'm trying to find it and read it now, so let's say circle back. Uh, it just got sent earlier today, the scan of it, yeah. along with the accounts payable. They were both sent yeah. together by uh, this morning, I guess. Uh, got sent by Sarah. Um, Shelby, I'll, I'll jump to you. Have you looked at the payroll warrant, and do you have any questions about it? Uh, yeah, I looked at it, no questions. Okay. Joseph, have you been able to find it? Yeah, I, I just uh, reviewed it. No questions. Okay. Um, all right, then I'd like to make a motion that we approve payroll warrant 2020-48, dated May 27th, 2020, in the amount of $1,139.83. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bruce. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving payroll warrant 2020-48, 
dated May 27th, 2020, in the amount of $1,139.83, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, payroll warrant is approved. Now moving on to the accounts payable warrant. Um, we'll go around again. Gwen, have you reviewed the accounts payable warrants and do you have any questions? Yes and no. Yes, you've reviewed it. No, you don't have any questions. <laughs> Thank you. Bruce, have you reviewed the accounts payable warrants and do you have any questions? Yes, I have and no, I don't. Okay. Um, Shelby, have you reviewed the accounts payable warrants and do you have any questions? I'm not, I'm distributed, no questions. Okay. Uh, Joseph, have you reviewed the accounts payable warrant and do you have any questions? Yes, I have, no questions. Okay. Um, all right, then I'd like to make a motion that we approve accounts payable warrant 2020-49 dated June 3rd, 2020 in the amount of $18,730.73 is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bruce. Uh, any, any further discussion? Nobody wants to compete with you, I think is what it is. I can understand that. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving accounts payable warrant 2020-49 dated June 3rd, 2020 in the amount of $18,730.73, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, then the accounts payable warrant is also approved. Um, moving on to agenda for next time. So we'll have an agenda item to discuss the six Papoose Lane situation. Um, we will have an agenda item to discuss road projects, um, and I will invite Archie to be part of that as well. Uh, Bruce, I assume, will have a Susie's Little Peanuts update? Yeah, probably not too much. Okay. He's under control, so um, yes. Okay. Um, any other agenda item? I guess we'll put on a tax collection update again. Yep, just idea. to touch base on that. Uh, Gwen, any other agenda items you can think of? Not that I can think of. Bruce, any other agenda items you can think of at the moment? No. Uh, Joseph, any other agenda items you can think of? No. Nope. Shelby, any other agenda items you can think of? No, um, I think that we can just amend the agenda the night of if, I, if there are any responses back from the survey, but oh, okay, we don't yeah, have a full right. agenda, so I'd rather we can leave it off. We can leave it off tentatively, and I'll bring. And if I have anything, I'll bring it up at the beginning cool. of the meeting. That sounds great. Cool. Thank you. Um, okay, then I would like to make a motion that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded again by Bruce. Everything tonight. Clean sweep. Uh, uh, any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, we are adjourned at 751.